Oh, it has been such a long time since we were last able to do a Grizzly Connect interview. Unfortunately, we have a chance to chat with one of the best in our first interview back, Bryant Johnson, with Drew Graham. He was just named the National Indoor Track and Field Male Athlete of the Year. This is across the country. RMAC, you had that award, Central Regional Award. But when you hear that you are the National Track and Field Athlete of the Year, how different is that? Yeah, I mean, it's a really good honor to get that. I never really expected anything like that. I was just, you know, my main focus, it was good to get the RMAC Athlete of the Year and it was good to get the Region Athlete of the Year, but going into the meet, my focus was just, you know, their prizes that people give you, but I wanted to go and get the prize that you've got to take yourself, you know, the national title. So it was great to win the national title. It was great to, you know, come second in the 800 and then to get Athlete of the Year, it's just a, an extra bonus, really. If I were to have asked you four years ago, what is a more probable scenario developing? You winning the Male Indoor Track and Field Athlete of the Year award or Newcastle United winning the Premier Cup, what would you have said? Uh, probably the first one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I came here thinking I was going to, like, my plan was to come here and, like, turn heads and be really good. And then my first few years, you know, D2 was pretty high standard. I, I didn't expect it to be as strong as it was. So um, eventually I feel like I've done what I came to do. But yeah, the first three years I was kind of thinking, yeah, you know, I'm going to come here straight away and I'm going to win. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then, you know, I got here and there's guys like Aaron Braun and Ruben Way. So, uh, yeah, I thought when I first came, I thought I was going to do better than I did. But, you know, I've worked hard and I'm, I'm glad where I'm, I'm glad that I'm where I am right now. Andrew Graham with the ASC men's track and field team has another year of eligibility for cross country, even though he's a senior. Just before we continue, I want to make sure I get this right. Since you are from Newcastle, if you could maybe give me a sentence to properly explain when the, tor uh, the term Jordy would be used to explain those from Newcastle. Give me, give me an idea of, of when one would say, what up, Jordy? How, how does that come out in a sentence? So a Jordy's like a Jordy's just a person from Newcastle, so... It's kind of like Cockney, I don't know if you've heard that, that's a person from London. And a Scouser, that's a person from Liverpool. So a Geordie would be, say, like, you're from Newcastle. Oh, you're a Geordie. So, like, there's a Geordie accent as well, which is uh, it's quite bizarre if you've never really heard it before. And it's uh, something that quite a few people find pretty hard to understand. It's like, it's almost its own language. It's, uh, it's derived from, like, when the Vikings first invaded the Northeast, and it's got... Some words are like derived from Danish and Norwegian, so it's quite strange. Like an example would be like, "Ya read me it, you gannin doing the two in the neat." Uh, <laughs> how's it gannin? So that's like, "You're right." Uh, how are you doing? Do you want to go down to the town tonight? Or like, "How are you, the lads?" That's what that's what we say. Like. Come on, Newcastle, like, come on, guys, how are the lads? What would it take? Now, this would just be something that I would really like personally. I mean, you don't need to tell Damon you're doing this because this will come back on me. But right before, you know, the gunfires, right before a big meet, if you just kind of looked over down the lane next to you and just got in the guy's head by giving him a little taste of what a Geordie really is, I mean, what's the probability of that happening? Um, he probably just would just look at me and say, <laughs> what are you talking about? Because, like, I work in a like a running store back home and um there's quite a few like people from say America or just around Europe come in and they're like speaking in say an American accent I'm, I say oh is that a Geordie accent you've got there <laughs> they're just like no no definitely not I don't understand anything that you guys are saying it's like especially like older people and stuff who you know lived there their whole lives just sometimes even I find it hard to understand it's just like it's just gibberish to some people so what separates a geordie man from you know a cockney or, or someone else from a different part of of the uk um like geordie uh, in the northeast of england sort of a working class background and um we sort of call people from down south southern fairies who say they've had it easy their whole lives They're like you know much richer than us and uh we um we come from like working class background sort of shipbuilding and coal mining stuff like that and uh the way we're pronounce certain words is quite a bit different. For example, in London, they'd say, you all want, mate? Go in the swimming pool with my friend Paul. I'm going on the pool. They just use, like, Paul, Paul, pool. That's just the same word to them. But in Newcastle, they'll say, like, I've got a book that I'm going to read. I'm going to cook my dinner. So they think it's quite funny that we say, like, book and cook and 
you know, stuff like that. So well, it's easy to lump in an entire country and think, okay, everyone is similar, but of course the North and Birmingham is more industrial and what you have in London. So I'm sure that's been kind of an eye opener to those who just don't have an extensive history about the UK. Now I wanted to see how you're feeling about this proposal, because I was talking with one of your teammates, Ruth Shane Scott, and he was going on and on about his Jamaican cuisine and his ability to cook oxtail and how delicious it is. Cook off England, Jamaica. What would you What would you fire up in the grill? What What, what could compete with Ruth Shane Scott's oxtail? Um, I'd, off the top of my head, I'd probably try and cook up like a traditional fish and chips, like properly with like beer battered cod, and um, you know, double fried, um, thick potatoes, stuff like that, and probably on the side mushy peas which I don't know if you guys heard of it's just like you get garden peas and you just like simmer them for ages and they go really like mushy and soft and yeah this sounds terrible I'd be willing to host it and sample just to make sure that we have a fair competition between both parties now what's what's going to be your status with uh, being back in the UK for the Olympic Games are you going to be able to attend anything in London what's your involvement going to be I'm I'm going to be back in England when the trials are on, and I believe I've already qualified for the trials. So it would be nice to do them, but just with the season here, it like you start indoors in January, then you go all the way through to outdoors. I'd kind of, I'm probably going to be burnt out physically and mentally by then, so I haven't decided if I'm going to do it yet. It would be nice because I think it's in the same stadium. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to definitely try and watch the marathon because that's one of the only events which is uh, free to watch. So the other well, And they're doing a lot at, at the new Wembley, isn't it? Uh, the yeah. new billion dollar. Yeah, I'm not sure if the trials is there or not. I haven't really looked into it yet, but um, it would be nice to see it, but it's really expensive. So I'm probably going to try and watch the the marathon. You know, Luke Craig and Matt Bond, who's currently on the team as well. And um, there's a guy called Mario who trains in the area. Like all those guys are going to try and make the marathon. So if one of them makes it, it'd be really you know, cool to see them running and have the Adam State connection even in London. For sure. But uh, where are British athletes at in track and field compared to you know, the history of, of British cross country and track and field athletes? Are are they peaking right now? Where would you say we're at in twenty twelve? Uh we had sort of a down period in the, you know, late nineties, early two thousands, but we're definitely on the up now. Like we've got Mo Farah, of course, who won the world championships and then there's a lot of guys sort of following in his footsteps. Distance running is definitely improving again. And um, if you look at the times from like the early 2000s, it's a lot deeper now in terms of uh, guys running good 5Ks and 10Ks. Kind of like the US, it's really improving. And then in the 1500, we haven't really got any complete world beaters at the minute, but we've got a, a lot of good guys who could potentially make the Olympic final. And we've got... Um, Michael Rimmer in the 800, and we've got a few other guys like Andrew Osaji, who was in the World Championship indoor final. So we're definitely on the up in that sense. He is Andrew Graham, uh, won the National Track and Field Indoor Male Athlete of the Year Award, wrapping up an illustrious career here at Adams State, and we appreciate you taking time with us on KSBK's Grizzly Connect. Would you like to give a proper Jordy uh, soundbite to conclude this interview? Um. <laughs> Try and think of one. Just a nice farewell for those who missed the actual content of your your last comment. Uh, all right, lads. Uh, I'm gunning him now. <laughs> he is Andrew Graham. Informational from every single thing you just said during the course of this interview. One of my favorites. Drew, thank you so much. This is Grizzly Connect on KSBK.